position. Uh, yeah, apparently they're, they're, yeah, they're already just walking off. That's why you didn't cover Burks. Yeah, some of the writers covering the game said they essentially had to make six outs to get out of that inning. <laughs> One thing, I, I, it was 5 nothing. I text a few of our big fans or close friends of mine, and they're, we're all Dodgers fans, so we're back and forth during the game, and I said, it doesn't look good, come on, man, we need fans in the game. And they, 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 one of them hit me, Kenny Gray, who runs men at Westwood, he, he, he goes, best lineup in baseball in 20 years, we're not out of it, so you gotta give him credit. But I always hit him with the Catholic pessimism. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> See, you know, my neighborhood we used to call it. You just, you just wind your way to a win. We'll go ahead and get started with opening statement from Coach, followed by questions from the group. Yeah, I, I appreciate uh, you know Coach Sai and I met. Why well, he was an assistant here, I was assistant for Coach Huggins in the late '90s. Um, so we met a long time ago. Summers out here, while I was out here with doing different things with um, Sonny Vaccaro. Um, in the summers and that, and so uh, yeah, I've been wanting to, we, we've been trying to get this done since I got the job. We go way, way back. So I thought his kids did a great job of not panicking and taking care of the ball, making shots, their, their movement. It was great practice for us. They remind me of Bellarmine, which is, a, I can't give a bigger compliment than that, with their, the way they cut and move. Instead of just, you know, sometimes you play a team, they come down, they throw no passes and take a, take a dribble off the dribble three. So uh, it was really good work for us to have to guard their cutting and moving and driving and all that stuff. It was tough to, uh, you know, with that though, I, you know, Adai came, Adai's practiced about five times. So it's just hard. They, they played no, no big guys for most of the games. So that was, that was a challenge. 60 points in the paint, um, something, obviously something we talked about after our scrimmage, where I kind of just let us play in our scrimmage. I didn't want to, tonight we were much more organized with what we were trying to accomplish, throwing the ball inside. So, as you can see, Tyler Roto can score. He can score at Oregon State, he can score here. I mean, obviously we got, you know, shooting. We shot over 50% from three tonight. I thought most of our shots were great, great shots. Defensively, what did you think about the press? And then uh, they also shot over 50 from three. So what did you yeah, they made a lot of shots. They said they're spread as a team like that. They're going to stick. They, they're getting their shot blocked whenever they went in there. You know, so we had four blocks, most of them early. So they were just trying to beat us and spray it out and shoot. So that's why I said it was great practice for us to have to deal with all that cutting and movement and all that. They made, they give them credit, you know, especially number 15, they made a lot of shots. Made eight, he made eight on his own. Are you still? We, we still, I don't, I, I still wonder, I have to ask our guys, Ben, like, did you guys notice he's made five? Did you notice he's made six? <laughs> you know, we let him, we, we've got to be smarter in a, you know, that's, so there's a lot of stuff that's good from this game that we can teach from. I don't care about the score. As much as like we can, we got to know when a guy's making shots like that. You can't leave. You know, it cost us the Illinois game two years ago, right? Terrence Shannon's not a great shooter, but on that night he was. Yeah. You know, so we got to make adjustments mid-game when the guys shooting a lot, shooting the ball away. Is this starting lineup tonight? Just we'll, to we'll probably have multiple starting lineups. We knew they were going to play small, so we went small. And uh, some guys, uh, you had mentioned Brandon Williams, you know, had offered a red shirt. Are there are some guys who are candidates to do that this year. Yes, we'll have those discussions before Monday. But I always leave that up to the player. But in the era, in the era of getting paid, if I was a young guy in the, in the final for minutes, I'd red shirt. I could make five years. I get paid for five years and for, instead of four before I got to get a job. <laughs> Pretty good deal, right? Yeah. Bumby's passing again, kind of quietly, 11 assists. Yeah, he's been on, but you know, you guys don't watch practice. Kobe's by far and away our assist leader. From July 8th on our first practice up until today. By far and away. Like, I'm going to say 40 or 50 more assists than the next guy you know, over a four-month period of workout. So that's not a surprise at all. 
Coach, aside from uh, yesterday, you talked about the substitutions, especially in the secret scrimmage. Yeah. With this actual live game, still an exhibition, but uh, more of a live uh, game situation, did these substitutions become a little bit easier to manage? Well, they were easy that game. I had it all written on a pad, and I just said, here, put the, you know, told the assistants every five minutes, just put the next group in. So that was pretty easy. It's going to be a, a chore from, you know, to, to keep everybody focused and understand the, the maturity of the situation that's going to require that you're, you're going to have. First of all, um, you have to earn minutes. Players de determine playing time. Okay. Every coach that says, oh, I don't play favorites is a liar. And there's a lot of them that lie in recruiting. I'm going to give you the ball. I'm going to be the man. I always tell you know, recruits, make sure he tells you that in the locker room in front of his team. So that they all know when you get there. See, I, I just don't do that. So everybody signed up here. That we don't lie to recruits. So um, everybody knows, like, hey, man, we're trying to get a bunch of good players so we can get back where we need to be at UCLA. And you're either in, if you're down with that, stay. If you're not, leave. If you're down with that, come on. You know, if you're not, so like every, it, like it, there was no secret, right? We had guys when we took transfers that came in and I said, you're, you're probably, I'm not, probably not gonna play coach. And I said, you're, you're right. You know, I love Will McClendon deeply. He's a great kid. He made the right decision if it was boiling down to playing time. If that's what his concern was. I thought he should have graduated and then done a fifth year. But that's, you know, degree from here is unbelievable. So, but, so everybody here was down, but it still don't make, it's, it's still gonna be a choice. Because everybody comes in, even though I say that, and I'm honest, everybody, I'm, I'm gonna be better than everybody. That's just, you know, players, that's just their mindset. So it's gonna be in a, it's gonna be work for me, you know. I just I, so I, I started the post game with it and ended with it. Body language, body language. It might not be your night. It might not be your night. And you have a lot of guys to choose from. <laughs> uh, last few uh, seasons, uh, you, you've seen what Tyler Bellado has done against you. How good is it? How good is it to have his skill set work with you now? Uh, it's a lot better to have him on my side. Hey, look, it's hard to win when you can't score. I restudy all of our games. Like last night, I watched our Cal game at Cal last year, trying to learn something about what we did. And just can't score. You were at the game? Oh, yeah. Can't score. Yeah. Layup, miss. Layup, miss. Two free throws, miss. Free throws. I mean, it's hard to win. We found a way to win, but that's not fun. You got to get some guys who can put it in the hole, man. Coaching's overrated. I mean, you can't win without defense, toughness, and winners on your team. But man, it, it, you can't coach that ball in the basket. So, you know, we got to see Tyler can put it in the basket. Our guys know he can as well. Speaking of putting the ball in the basket, Dylan has said he wants to be a 40, 50, 90 player. Can I make two or three? Say that again? Uh, Dylan wants to be a 40, 50, 90 player. Hold on, see, now you're giving me some new fangled stuff. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah. 40, 50, 90? What is that? Oh, percentage. percentage. Yeah. There's a reason he said that. Yeah. He, he said he called. Can you tell you what I told him? That's why he said that. No, he didn't mention that. But yeah. uh, he basically said he worked a lot on his three in the summers. Uh, uh, in the summer, do you, do you feel like he's made strides there? Can he be that kind of player? I think he needs to live in the gym. He wants to make it. Because in the last three NBA drafts, in the there, there's been six guys drafted in the first round. You listening, Sky? Under six foot five. And four of those six are six foot four. So that's what I tell these small guys. Okay, you you better be as you you better be basically what it said on Samuel Jackson's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you my, my move. You got that money, huh? Oh yeah. I mean, if you ain't 6'5 or bigger than that, you better, I mean, it just is what it is. You know, but I explained to those guys, like, you know, I showed them a guy that got drafted last year. They all know. I said, you know, 46, 41. That's why he got drafted. I'll tell you his name off the Okay. They don't draft guys that shoot 38, 33. 
They just don't. I mean, you know, they hire all these kids that went to all these schools that never played basketball. MIT and all these, you know, analytic. I mean, you, you can get a guy from my neighborhood back in Coleraine, Ohio. He can tell you don't draft a guy who's 33. He didn't need to go to MIT, Coach Carlson. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you. These guys up here.